Good morning. So today we're meeting Alicia Mopen. Alicia is the Deputy General Manager of Aster Healthcare. They are available in seven countries, 400 units, 20,000 employees, and they take care of 20 million patients every single year. And I cannot wait for you to meet her. This uh, interview is part of the YPO interview series. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing in the link below where you get notified every time we release a new video. Let's go to the interview. So when I was born, my father had already picked out a name for me. And when I came out, he was very sure he was going to have a boy. But then out I came and he decided he'll stick with the name he had chosen. So for the first 15 years of my life, I was called Zubin, Zenosha, Mupin. Growing up, hating this name and I was like what does this even mean I have no idea where he picked it up from and it started with Z which was the last alphabet and because of that being the last alphabet I would always be last in the queue for everything in the school roles everything and I just hated it so I remember when I was 15 I went to him and I said you know dad I mean I hate this name uh, why did you call me this it's a boy's name it doesn't mean anything to me. I don't understand. I can't relate. And he just looked at me and he's like, okay, so you don't like your name? Then change it. What's, what's stopping you? That's when I said, you know what? I'm going to change it. Why should I stick with something that I don't like? And I went from Z to A and I picked <laughs> Alicia. And Alicia, the meaning of Alicia is nobility. And I love the name. But to me, more than the name, it was... Try, trying to take control of my life, right? There are certain things that you're born with and certain things that you can't change, which family you're born into, what your gender is. But I think almost everything else is something which you direct in your life and you have to take control of your own life, right? So I feel very happy that at least by the time I was 15, I was able to partially learn that lesson for myself. So growing up, um, I am a, mostly a Dubai child, grew up here in Dubai, but then I went across to the US, I did my undergraduate there, and then I went to UK and I was working for Ernst & Young for six, seven years, uh, did my ch chartered accounting there. For me, I grew up seeing a family where it was all about serving the community. My father is a doctor and he would see 70, 80, 100 patients a day. And we would always hear about patient care and how to look after people who are in need. So being a doctor was one of my childhood dreams, but it was not something that uh, my mom was not very excited about just because she thought she'd never see me and I wouldn't have time for family. I wouldn't have time for everything else. And I would have to study for such a long time. So I was kind of steered towards, you know, doing something else other than a doctor. And I, I found myself at like 22, 23 being this chartered accountant. And it was great. I was working for one of the big four firms, great professional environment, lots of learning opportunities, lots of growth opportunities. But somewhere for me, it wasn't fulfilling enough because there's, uh, it just consulting just was not resonating with my core purpose. But, you know, I loved work, so I continued doing whatever I was doing. But then when I was 25, uh, my son, who was two years old, he had an accident and it just changed my life. He had a really terrible uh, injury in his eye where he almost became partially blind. He got a piece of glass in his eye and I suddenly was in a very dark place and my life was just filled with visits to the doctors. He had four surgeries and I was just in the doctors and the hospital day in, day out for months at a stretch. And that was really when it hit me at the end of the day, healthcare was what really resonated for me. I said, you know, making balance sheets balance, it just didn't do anything to my sole purpose. And I said, 
you know, what am I doing here? I need to do something which really sort of inspires me, which motivates me. But my interaction with the health system at that time, where I had some wonderful doctors who really made life so supportive at that point, and I had some interactions which were extremely painful where they didn't understand me as a human being, me as a mother, me as a, you know, having to deal with a two-year-old child uh, who had to wear a patch for eight hours. And that really sort of, brought me back to wanting to be in healthcare. And I had this uh, personal um, challenge of being in a, in a relationship that I was not entirely happy with. And, you know, I had to take this path and say, you know what, let me go back to healthcare. Let me go back to something that I care about deeply. And let me sort of carve another path for myself. But I realize that people have a habit of hijacking your life. And sometimes we're, we're, we let people hijack it. So again, you're right. Second time around, I, I felt my life was hijacked and I had to kind of pull it back. When I came back to Dubai and what I realized is finding what drives your soul and finding that purpose is the m- most important thing in life, right? So being in healthcare, I was thrilled. I was elated. It, it put me in an ecosystem where I, I was thriving because I went to bed every night feeling so happy and fulfilled because it gave me sheer joy and pleasure to be able to know that there was some way that within the system, we were able to positively impact people's lives. We have an ecosystem where we've got around 400 units across seven countries. We have 20,000 amazing people whose, ev- whose purpose every day is how do we make a life better for someone else, right? So it is, I, I always say being in healthcare has to be a conscious choice because it's not easy. Every day you're facing people who are in a very fragile, a very vulnerable, vulnerable state. It's probably the most painful place to be in because you're worried about your health or the health of a loved one. So to be able to be on the other side where you are extending care, where you are extending service, where you are serving people, you need to really kind of connect to that cause to be able to be in that. So when you meet the doctors who are there, when you meet the nurses who are there, when you meet the administrators and the managers, they all have to deeply connect to this cause because otherwise you can't do justice in healthcare. You cannot think of it as a business. And for us in Aster, it is not a business. It is first about serving the patients, making sure you ser- you look after the patient as a human in the best way possible. And we say everything else follows. I mean, the last seven months have been nothing short of a roller coaster ride, right? I think if for a lot of people, uh, it's, it's brought life to a standstill. But within healthcare, there was not a moment to pause. It was literally for us just shifting from one model of care right to, again, still healthcare, looking after the COVID patients. I think the initial fear lasted for a short period of time, because naturally every single person was, we are all scared of the unknown and we didn't know what we were up against. I mean, we knew that it is a very contagious virus. We knew that everyone who was exposed is at high risk of uh, contracting the disease as well. But that fear sort of dissipated very quickly. And people were like, you know what? This is what we signed up for. We are here for the patients and we will do whatever is needed. It was a very short learning curve because, you know, mother nature didn't give us a chance to sort of take our own sweet time. And it really just meant that everyone just plunged in and sort of took care. You know, according to WHO, around 14% of COVID cases in the world are within healthcare workers. Again, at the end of the day, and we know we haven't handled or gotten past this pandemic yet, but I feel very proud to be part of the uh, healthcare system where we are able to, you know, sort of be very close to people and sort of support and take care. The biggest uh, learning out of COVID has been about agility and speed, right? Because in today's world, and especially with this pandemic, there is no time to sit back and think about what you're going to do. I think having the courage 
to take some calls, courage to act with almost only 50% of the information is very important because we're never, we don't have the visibility of, okay, is this working? Is this not working? But I think it is very important as leaders as well, we figure out that we're in a system, we're in a world where you are going to have to make informed decisions. I think earlier the leadership was more about let's look at the trends and we see certain things repeating itself. That is no longer the case anymore. It is about being able to make very informed and logical decision with the information you have available right now, but with the ability to have a team that pivots as new information comes to light. One of the first things I feel is a blessing from COVID is the attention it has put on your personal health. And I think we had reached a world where people put that in the back seat and said, I'll deal with my health later. Whereas this put it right in front of your face and said, you know what? Nothing matters more than your health. And to be honest, everything is pretty much within your own hands and literally within your own hands when you're washing your hands, but in your own control. From a healthcare perspective, it's been phenomenal because healthcare has been one of the most traditional industries. And for some reason, both the healthcare professionals and patients uh, did not feel comfortable shifting to the new options of healthcare delivery, right? Because we all felt comfortable going to the clinic, going to the hospital, And that was no longer an option when COVID hit. So everyone had to kind of shift to the virtual model. And people realized, wait a second, this is just as effective, just as good, and even more convenient. So I think it's opened up at, I mean, it was going to happen anyways, but it just accelerated it so much so. Gratitude is a very important thing, right? And I think as women, we do function from a space of a lot of gratitude for what is out there and what life has given us. And I personally, I've been very blessed. The family that I have, the family that I chose, you know, the work opportunities that I have, all of that is something which I'm very grateful for. I personally believe in very strongly is the law of attraction and about you manifest what you want in the world. And if you are submerged in fear, then you have those things getting manifested. So how is it that you can think very positively about a future and a life for you and your dreams and your goals and your vision and making, you know, sort of taking those baby steps towards making that a reality? I really believe that the universe will conspire to make your dream a reality, but you have to sort of put those dreams out there. You have to put that energy out there and then you have to work towards that. There's no magic formula, but do believe in yourself. I think as women, the hardest thing we have is we always believe that we could do more and we all always can do more, but at least believe how precious and how different we are. Because if we don't believe in ourselves, nobody is going to believe in us. First thing I would say is uh, being as authentic as possible. I think you have to bring your true self, your authenticity on the table. I remember when I joined the business and, you know, I, uh, my father is, uh, uh, is an incredible human being and he is uh, so charming and so phenomenal and people just love him. And it was very natural that people would compare me to him. And I remember briefly thinking, but how am I, how can I be like him? Like he is a different league and it's not fair for people to compare me to him. And then I realized, you know what, that's right. I cannot be compared to him. He is very different. I am very different. And, uh, you know, over years, people have realized I am who I am. There is no point comparing me to him. He was in his era, in his generation. He's a legend. I will, you know, I will carve my own story with time and we all need to do that. So there's no point trying to be anyone else. And I stopped trying to be like that because I have bits of him that I've inherited, the bits of him that I have embraced. But at the end of the day, I'm my own person. So that's one thing I would say. But the second thing I would also add is one thing which has really helped me in my life is having a mentor, mentor and a coach. And I sort of actively went and sought out 
uh, someone who I really get inspired by. And, you know, I think you need to do that because there's so much to learn from people and we pick it up on different conversations uh, and interactions and YPO also facilitates a lot of that. But apart from that, I think it's important if you can actually find someone who truly inspires you and people are very kind and people who have excelled and achieved a lot want to see other successful people. I have a mentor who really has played a pivotal part in making me reframe questions, think differently. You have to keep learning and you have to keep growing. So having support mechanisms like that is really important for you to to really kind of uh, challenge the status quo and keep improving yourself. I think all I would say is, uh, you know, the most important thing in life is uh, family and love. Family is who you're born to, but also just finding that right partner, right? I think having the right relationships make a world of difference. So, you know, just be very grateful for everything you have and follow your dreams. Alicia, thank you so much. This friend so inspiring. I could uh, relate to most of the things. So we're definitely going to have to have uh, a coffee at some point now that uh, we're both in Dubai. So thank you for taking the time to inspire so many people and especially working uh, moms that can see that they can take control of their life and they can decide and not let anyone hijack their life. So thank you so much for all your insight and hope to see you very soon. Thank you, Christine. Thank you so much. It's my deep uh, pleasure to have been part of this. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye.